Welcome to HodgePodge Australia. Today we are making a Tinkerbell cake using a giant cupcake pan. The things you need for a Tinkerbell cake are the giant cupcake, which I have already crumb coated in buttercream. We have it stuck down on a cake board, so you will need that. We have dark green fondant, light green fondant, dark chocolate fondant, and I have some ivory colored fondant. You will need a leaf cutter. I have one that's a plunge cutter so we get some veinage. You need a little Tinkerbell doll and you, well, you don't need, but I am using a texture mat so that we get a wood grain finish on our little hut. You can also just put brown fondant or even just use a chocolate shell, but I like this because it has the texture of the wood. Now, my Tinkerbell doll does not stand up on her own. As you can see, she's a sort of got bent legs so I am going to make her a little toadstool to sit on on the outside of her house. So starting with a little bit of ivory fondant I'm simply going to roll that into a ball and then using my fingers I'm going to shape it into just a little sort of oval shape like the base of a toadstool. So just twisting it round and round there you see it almost resembles a thumb when I pick it up but it's got to be flat on the bottom. I suppose it's like a thimble, doesn't matter. It's the base of a toadstool. Getting the green, we're going to roll that into a ball and then placing it on the mat, just push it down into the top of a mushroom shape. That is all you need to do for your little toadstool. Once you have attached those two pieces and made sure Tinkerbell actually will stay on it, then you can put that over to the side to start to dry. You will then want to start cutting out some leaves. You're going to need lots of leaves for the top of your giant cupcake. So using our little veining plunge leaf cutter, I'm going to roll out some green fondant and I am going to get pressing on some leaves. So there you can see I have lovely veins in my leaves without not just using just a simple cutter. I have the, the plunge cutter. It adds that extra detail and I've done some in some light green as well. So we have some contrasting colors. You need lots and lots of those leaves. So do that first. Getting onto our texture mat, the size of the giant cupcake, I'm only going to need to go up to half. So I only need half of this texture mat. So rolling out some of my brown fondant, you can use a lighter brown if you'd like. I had dark brown in on hand and I like to use what I have on hand because I have so many tubs of fondant on hand. So I'm going to use my dark chocolate. Light chocolate would be nice as well. Just a nice brown. Mine is a nice dark chocolate. You just roll out the fondant till it's a couple of credit cards thick, then place it over your texture mat and roll it onto the mat so that you get that lovely imprint. And you'll see in a minute when I lift that off, just how well the texture mat comes off. Now I don't actually put anything on my texture mat. It comes off nice and clean. You don't need to grease it or flour it or anything like that. They just slide right off again and we get this lovely wood grain effect. You then need to spend some time cutting out the extra pieces, which can be a little bit fiddly, but the good thing with wood is that it's just nice straight lines. So it's in and across and in and across. So just trim those excess pieces out and then we're going to start placing that onto the base of our giant cupcake. Now you will need to remember which side of the mat you started on because you're going to want to line these up as best as possible. You will need about three going around the giant cupcake. So placing your first piece on and getting it to line up at the bottom. Don't worry, you can push it back down again. You will notice I have gone up a little bit higher on my giant cupcake. That is because I want to make sure that I get perfect coverage when I put my roof on. I don't want there to be a gap. So place your wood piece down and then you are just going to simply take the time to do this three more times or two more times because you need three pieces. The awesome thing about this too is if you do find that your pieces aren't lining up as perfectly as you would think, you know, they're not lining up like a jigsaw puzzle when you're putting in the new ones, you can simply take off some of that top piece that you have there and you can cut it into a smaller section and fill in any gaps because it's usually like a little square or a rectangle that you have to fill in in a gap and because it's wood it looks natural, it looks like that should be there, it doesn't look like you're patching up a hole. So kudos. Next we've put our top onto our giant cupcake. Oh, I disappeared there for a second but I'm back and once I'm happy with my positioning it is time to put on our leaves. So simply bringing over all the leaves that we cut out earlier or you know after we put our toadstool on the cake board that too. We're going to get our leaves and we're simply going to place them on starting at the bottom because we want them to overlap like a tile roof. We're going to grab our leaves and every now and then we're going to put in one of our light 
green leaves just to break up the pattern because if you had it all dark green I think it would get a little bit boring so just putting in a light green every now and then just breaks up the pattern so you're going to put those all around the base of the cake then you're going to do your next layer so sort of trying to overlap on your leaves try to have them still a little bit flexible so not completely dry don't cut these and let them go overnight because it is helpful to have them so that you can sort of overlap them and put one on top of the other if you need to make room so that you don't expose as much buttercream I did let mine dry all the way I did mine yesterday and let them dry and I do wish they'd had a little bit more movement because then I wouldn't have had as much of a buttercream gap but that's just my little tip from me to you my mistake is your gain but here is their roof and the last thing that Tinkerbell needs for her house is a door. She can't get into her house without a door, so let's roll out some of that ivory fondant. Loving the lines on the Wilton mat, we can just go straight across it and we have a nice straight bottom. And then freehanding with our small little pizza cutter, we're going to cut out a door. Now I have one piece of brown fondant with the wood grain effect still on there. I've cut off the top when I was trimming down. I'm going to put that on the outside of my door so that it really finishes it off and has a nice trim. Then using another tiny little piece, I am going to fashion a doorknob. Tinkerbell can't get into her house without a doorknob. How on earth is she going to get that door open without it? So let's place our little Tinkerbell door onto our giant Tinkerbell cupcake and she will be all good to go in her new house great thing about this is it's still sticky on the back so we can just put it straight down, down onto our fondant and another good thing is if you have any little patches on your house that you need to cover up that's a great place to put the door so pick the place for your door and then simply line it up with the base so it's nice and straight and stick that thing onto the cake there it is look it's all finished she's got a lovely little door she can go into now the absolute last thing we have to do i know i said the door was the last thing to do but i remember there's another thing to do is put tinkerbell in a house because that just makes sense. Of course, Tinkerbell needs to be in her house. We just made it for her and she's going to be thrilled with her house. So let's put her down on that toadstool that we made for her earlier. And there is our Tinkerbell cake, which I think is a super winner. Thank you so much for watching our tutorial today. We upload twice a week. Make sure you subscribe to us here at HodgePodge Australia. Let us know if there's anything in particular you would like to see and we will see you again real soon.